What's up guys? So this is going to be a video on a connection manager that I found for Linux. Um, so at my office, I use a product called Secure CRT, which is a fantastic product, but it's also a hundred bucks. And it has um, distributions for both Linux and Windows. And um, But if you don't want to spend a hundred bucks on a product like that, that does tab-based SSH essentially is all I use it for. Um, you can get additional tools in Windows that are pretty good, but in the Linux space, it seems like they're lacking a little bit. So um, back in the day, I used to use a product called PAC Manager, P-A-C Manager, and um, apparently it is no longer maintained by the, the developer. Um, it's kind of an interesting thing if you go and you, and you follow the, the thread down here on the bottom of this new one that I found. It talks a little bit about that. Um, that he doesn't he doesn't want to uh, maintain it anymore or whatever the reason is. But if you read it, it's kind of interesting because he seems like he's he's disappointed or mad about the whole thing. Um, Pack Manager is a fantastic product, and actually this new one that's out there is called Asbrew Osbrew. I, I guess that's how you say that. Osbrew Connection Manager, and it is actually a fork of Pack Manager. So, but it is maintained still, whereas Pack Manager is not. So. Um, this is a fantastic product. It really is. It's probably, to be honest with you, the best one that you can get in Linux. Um, that's that's probably an arguable statement. Everything is subjective, right? That's my opinion. It's the best one. But the reality is that it is very good and um, apparently has some pretty cool things like it does key pass integration so, so you can keep your passwords for your SSH sessions, I guess, in key pass. I didn't do that. I use key pass, but I didn't put... I didn't integrate it, but apparently it has that built in. I guess it does wake on LAN, which is kind of cool. So if you want to connect to a device and it's currently off and it has wake on LAN enabled, you, it'll send that, that wake on LAN packet to that device and try to wake it up. Um, another thing that it does, it's not just tabbed-based SSH connections like I've got here, which is primarily what I would use it for. You can also do RDP sessions. And so I wanted to show that um, to you guys. Um, this, is the, this is the Osbrew Connection Manager. And these are the various connections I've got already configured to two of my Linux hosts and one of my, my um, lab environment, Windows 10 hosts. And, um, and this is the RDP session. It's using our desktop. So the problem with our desktop that you'll find is that if uh, Windows 10 machines, if it requires NLA for RDP, you're going to run into a problem with authenticating with our desktop unless you configure Kerberos. And that's kind of a pain in the neck. So you might have to disable the NLA function, which makes your RDP a little less secure. But in a lab environment like I've got here, I guess it doesn't really matter. In a production environment at the office, this would be an issue. Most likely, NLA will be enabled, and you'd have to figure out how to make that function. It's possible. Um, I'm not going to talk about it much more in this video, though. But it is possible to enable that. Um, SSH configuration, um, it, sa it can save username and password. So when you try to connect to one of these, it just logs you right in, which is totally awesome. That's exactly what I want. Um, you can also say ask for a password if you don't feel safe saving passwords like that. Um, you can create folders inside of these. So you could say this is my, my Linux machines, and then you could put these underneath of that. I proved wrong, aren't I? So maybe it's not quite the most refined interface available. It's kind of dumb, actually. How do you move that? That's a good question. You could probably modify this. I, I, don't, I don't know, honestly. I thought you could just drag this. That would be the intuitive thing that you'd be able to drag those in there like that. But is what it is. So you can do this. You could, you could say a new, a new connection. You could add it to the folder. Um, so you, you could like most likely structure it. Um, for me, I'm a network engineer. And I have a lot of network devices I connect to. So I would structure these with like maybe the location it's in, the device type, and then the, the devices that are underneath it. So I can, I can break through and, and find them in a more structured manner than just a big long list of SSH sessions. So, um, so this is a fantastic product. It's, it's as good, probably better than Pac Manager. No knock to the original guy that made Pac Manager because he's really the reason that this, uh, this particular um, Asbrew Connection Manager product was even available to download. So... Um, it's pretty easy to install. I'm on Ubuntu 18.04, and basically what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to add their repository, and then you can install it. And those are literally two commands to install. That's it. If you already had Pack Manager installed on your system, you're going to want to go ahead and delete that. So that's under um, the configuration for it. Well, actually, I, let, me, let me back that up a little bit. You may not want to delete it because maybe you want to import all the settings from your Pack Manager instance. In my case, I did have Pack Manager installed, still do. 
And when Asbru decided to import those settings, as it asked me, like, hey, do you want to import these for the first run? I said, sure, why not? Well, then it broke Asbru. I literally would not load. So the only way I could get it to load is if I did an RMRF um, Asbru folder and deleted the Asbru config. And then I also had to delete the pack config, which was right there. So um, once I got once I got the old configuration removed, this, the thing that it imported from Pack Manager for some reason didn't import correctly. Um, Asbru Connection Manager came up and ran fine. So, um, so I would say that if you're looking for a tabbed-based tool for SSH and RDP or whatever else that you might want to do, in fact, let's check that out. Let me show you. So, if you create a new one here, we'll call this, we'll call this uh, G Server. What the heck? I don't have one, but. So here's your options in here. You can literally do a method. These are the various methods you can use. VNC, WebDAV, Telnet, SSH, SFTP, RDP, two different types, X-Free RDP and R, R Desktop. Uh, generic command, I don't even know what that means. Some old school terminals, I guess. None of these I would use except for maybe Serial, uh, SSH, RDP. Telnet should hopefully be disabled on literally everything. If you're using Telnet still, that's crazy. If you're using FTP, better not be anything uh, that you want protected on FTP. It should always be SFTP, always be SSH, and always secure your RDP connections. And so basically this is it. You can There's all kinds of configuration here. If we switch it to Windows, uh, you'll see that some of it will change. How come I can't see it? There we go. Changes the little icon. Instead of having that lock, it's actually a Windows icon, um, host name, the port number that it's running on, um, some additional settings, which I don't see anything fancy there. Maybe you could like prepend some commands and get the uh, NLA thing to work. I, I don't know. I haven't gone through that part, but um, I think those are the only ones I wanted to show you. So you got some terminals. Oh, look. So you can also set the resolution of the RDP session that you want to connect to. Um, for SSH terminal options, you can likely change the colors. You can add some macros. And uh, it's a fantastic product. Um, save and close, and you've got yourself a new setting. Well, a new uh, connection profile. Although I don't put anything in there, so it didn't work. So. So that's basically it. I mean, we've got right out of the gate, it, it handles the co the correct, um, honestly, I don't remember the term for this. Back in the day, this would be like ANSI. I mean, obviously, that's probably not what it is anymore, but it's it's color. It sends color codes along with the text, and so it'll understand, you know, the color that comes across from the Linux shell. Um, so that's basically it. Um, I'll put a link in my video for where to download ASBRU, ASBRU, ASBRU. Kind of a weird name to be honest with you, but whatever. I can't knock it. It's a good product. So if you guys want a tab-based connection manager, this is probably the best thing you can find for Linux. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed.